Hello, how is it going? It is Faker coming at you once again with another Legends of Rune Terror video. Today, I'm going to share with you guys the Championless Undying deck. This is essentially a deck that does not use any champions, which is amazing. It's great for entry level players that maybe can't afford to get all the champions or would like to try something different without investing a lot of resources. I can definitely recommend this deck. It is a lot of fun and you can do a lot of interesting things. It's a, basically a deck that revolves around these cards that have effects that if they die, they seem to come back with powerful uh, value. And we pretty much build a deck around that so that we can abuse the mechanic and then really punch our opponents in the face throughout the middle of the game. So I guess you can classify this as a mid-range deck. Very powerful, would recommend this list in particular. And let's go jump across, have a look at the cards, talk about the cards and what they shall be doing here today. I just wanna say thank you guys again for all the support. And if you aren't currently following me on Twitter, I recommend you do, just in case there's any updates that need to be passed along, or if you wanna say hello. Thank you guys, I will see you soon. All right, so this is probably like, uh, this card right here is a highlight of the deck. This is the Undying, basically a card that whenever it dies, it just returns back and gets stats buffed upon it. So we basically build around this and some other cards and we use cards that can pretty much, pretty much kill our cards bring them back, spread the board out, do lots of crazy things. We'll talk about the core of the deck. This is like probably the feature of the deck. But outside of that, we do also have cards like Curse Keeper that when they die, they summon the Escaped Abomination. Of course, these two units in particular cannot block, so they can be a little bit susceptible to aggro, but you can combat them throughout the early game with cards like Curse Keeper alongside Ravenous Butcher to kill it for zero mana on two, which is pretty crazy. You can also play it alongside Chronolukura Ruin to at least get some value and then bring back the Curse Keepers or the Undying just to get some ridiculous board states. This deck in particular is very uh, abusable towards decks that run a lot of removal because we oftentimes don't care too much. So this is going to be a Demacia and uh, Shadow Isles Splash. So we can run cards like Tiana at the top end, which is just crazy for rallying. And since our units are usually sticking around, this card does find a bit of value as a one-off on the top end, which is pretty cool. We run cards like Ruination as a one-off because also you know, our units dying is not the worst, plus we get a lot more value from this removal than our opponents will. Uh, we have one single copy of Vengeance because Shadow Isles, we run Vengeance, it's pretty strong. Atrocity is a two of, it can be abused alongside your Undyings later in the game if they get really big, or just anything that's sticking around for finishing off the opponent. Atrocity specifically finds more value in this deck because as we've seen, Undying returns back to us and we can just keep abusing that. Three copies of Radiant Guardian will go alongside the deck because our units are going to be dying. Radiant Guardian does find a lot of value and life steal is great. We do have very limited life steal on this deck and cards like Radiant Guardian are insane for getting tons of life steal. Really powerful. With all the synergies that we have with stuff dying, it's not uncommon to get Radiant Guardian's uh, ability unlocked. Ethereal, Remin uh, Ethereal Reminita, this is going to be your big value play, your big push towards the middle of the game. You usually got stuff sticking around, you're going to play this kill unit to summon one that costs two more. Goes really good alongside Undying, goes pretty good alongside Curse Keeper as well. Uh, the single copy of Ancient Crocolith, now this is a very good flavor, I like this card. If you drop this down early enough, it can pretty much be a huge blocker against aggro and like it's just gonna sit there and eat things up literally look at the size of this guy this is your four mana seven seven from hearthstone i love the flavor of this card amazing card vanguard redeemer makes for good cycle when we have a deck revolved around stuff dying so without a doubt vanguard redeemer is going to fit and you'll see some more cards as we progress up the list that will go alongside these cards that revolve around stuff dying undying we've spoken of already vile feast because we are in shadow isles <laughs> Single combat is a three of, a, another similar mechanic to atrocity. The fact that we have our units that are sticking around makes for some great value from single combat. It also helps with units that can't block to protect your face at times if needed. Purify as a one of now, you're going to see in the games ahead that this Purify found tremendous value. It's a single copy of, and I seem to keep throwing it back into my deck, but I was fortunate enough to find it when we needed it. It's really good at abusing certain uh, deck archetypes you'll see, especially against people running Unyielding Spirit that aren't placing it onto their Fiora. This card is really useful dealing with, uh, dealing with um, Elusive as well. It can do a, a bunch of various things. And I think we're in Demacia in a list that's not built around the mid-range value like Bannerman. So cards like Purify fitting into this deck can be definitely uh, achievable. 
Glimpse Beyond is a uh, Glimpse Beyond is a three off because Shadow Isles. I don't think I need to explain more. And then even again, this deck finds a lot more value from Glimpse Beyond because our units will keep returning. We're always going to have Glimpse Beyond value. Curse Keeper, we've already discussed this card, but um, at the same time, I guess we'll talk about a quick matchup against Aggro. If you're fortunate enough to find your Curse Keeper and your Butcher in the opening hand, this is going to be like your cookie cutter intense play to really take over the board. And in other matchups, you probably lean towards that as well against some mid-range decks you may consider doing it. Against Control, you pretty much want to be looking for like the Curse Keeper Undyings, followed up by like the Crocoliths or the um, Chronicle of Ruin more specifically, so then you can keep flowing the death of units, because you don't want to run out of good targets to hit your Chronicle on, or your rem remit uh, <laughs> sorry, Remitter. Okay, so that's the one thing to keep an eye out for. Don't hesitate to swing with the Curse Keeper as well. You know, you're going to get some chip damage here and there. Your opponent's probably not going to block it. But there is the rare occasions where your opponent may have a heads up play where he feels like he'll gain some value if he kills off your Curse Keeper prior to it happening. Just make sure to keep an eye out for the moments where you're safe to use your Glimpse Beyond, you're safe to use your cards uh, that will allow you to get value from it, such as single combat, etc. Um, so the good thing about Chronicle Ruin and Remediator 2 is that because they're play cards, you can't really stop them from happening. So just keep your eyes out for moments where you can really abuse the board state with them. Or if you need to play aggressively, don't hesitate to butcher on your Curse Keeper early. Warden's Prey this is really just flows with the deck, helps against aggro, gives you a little bit more units and a bit more targets to hit with your Chronicle. This is probably the best... Uh, best one drop to have for this deck. You could also have Hapless Aristocrat, but this is only a common... So we're going to run a card like this, which is going to also give us value. Because this deck is a bit more focused around the value of things. As long as we have something to chump block early, like Warden's Prey, we're going to benefit a lot more from the unit that comes out of it. And we also have a chance of finding cards like Undying and Curse Keeper. So that makes for a great bonus. Ravenous Butcher to fill out the deck and bring this deck with a lot of synergy. Like this deck is very synergistic without impacting the performance of individual cards it's, it's it's very strong deck i really recommend you guys have a shot at this one anyway let's jump over we'll have a few games and i hope you enjoy the clips if you did leave a like and i will see you soon uh see you see you soon soon have a great day guys bye bye that's an aggressive deck purify does a little bit of work in the early game to stop constant damage i'm gonna keep the butcher in hopes that we find something to play alongside it excellent So this list doesn't have any grasp beyond dying, but at least we're on the um we're going second. Makes a huge difference. Makes a huge difference going second against Burn. You have no idea. Let me tell you, let me tell you a story about Rearguard Sergeant Turn 1. <laughs> the bummer of a card. I don't think Rearguard Sergeant is that strong though. I don't think there's enough cards to combat a 3-2 on turn 1 on every class color. I was thinking about it, I'm like, is Rearguard Sergeant too strong? Does that card need to be tweaked? But then what do you do to it? Do you make it a... Because it already can't block, which is like meant to kind of reduce its value. But I really don't think that makes much of a difference. We're going to slow play this turn. I'm going to punish him with the Purify. I can't play Purify. This is open attack. The 3-2, he's okay. Yeah, he's fine. I just get salty at him all the time. What do I do about this? Nothing, right? Sure. At least it's not going to my face, which is kind of important. Remember the kind of waited for this. I can purify this right now and deny 4 damage, which is fucking insane. I deny 4 damage now. Can't block all these units next turn. Hope to draw something kind of useful. Single combat is very useful. If he slow plays here, I can drop the Undying. That's a good target for single combat. You get the value out of Undying as much as we can. I think we've stabilized pretty well. Try 
I think we play on dying here in case he plays another unit. I mean, if you're playing burn, it feels like an obvious decision to include in a single combat to die four points of damage. It feels obvious decision to include all my three two. Generally, though, I don't know. Seems met undying. Yeah, it does seem fun, especially with all the ways to kill it. It does seem fun. I think right now, single combat as well against this seems fun. Denying four points of damage is mental. We've kind of drew like the best cards we could possibly ask for. He slow played twice. I get to play Butcher here. Put up some more blockers. I'm not going to say this game's over, but we've definitely stabilized enough. Unfortunately, I believe, I believe I'm supposed to tank some damage here. We've, we've sacrificed some resources to save our face. I would love to block here, but with the t next card we have, I kind of have to sacrifice the damage now so I can play this for value. I, I know that... I was not meant to really block there. I know that if I was going to block, I'd block there, but we're not blocking this turn. We have Ethereal and Minita. We're going to change the 4-2. I kind of forgot about the Undying. I'll be honest here, guys. That was obviously a better target for it. Oh, we still have a 4-2. I'm happy about that. So we're going to kill the Undying, which makes a lot more sense. I wonder if I should have done it before or after the attack. I don't think so. I think before the attack makes sense. We don't open attack. We don't open attack. No. I mean, I definitely could have. That may have been a mistake. Your path ends here. No, I'm not entirely sure. Could have opened attack there with a 4-2 and a 3-3. Three, three. He could have blocked. He wouldn't have wanted to kill the Undying. I could have got the value from the Undying after the attack. But I'm kind of pressuring him at the same time as well. I'm putting a lot of stats on board. He's going to do something here to clear my board up. Blood transfusion. As long as he's not sitting on double decimate hand, I'll try and kill him next turn. If he's sitting on double decimate hand, I can kill him. I have my not immediately though. I think I think we'll be able to stabilize. Oh, that will that will make a bit of a difference. I'm probably not gonna get to play it though. In position. I want him to kill my units so bad. Reporting in. Okay, we can play Radiant Guy in this turn. I'll do better this time. I too, sir. This is our homeland. Yeah, this is good. I think we just this is this is a GG. Almost a GG. Unless he's sitting on exactly decimate right now. Justice will be served. Unless he has decimate right now. Let's make a deal. Yeah, this wraps up the game. Like if he drew, if he top deck get excited, that won't work. Radiant Guardian's gonna life steal the game's over. GG. The one card that could have got him there was the possible decimate in hand. I took a bit of a risk there. But then he would have also had to top deck the burn exactly, which is not always gonna happen.
Are we gonna get as lucky as we did before? I don't trust myself to keep on dying in the opening hand. It feels very, very bad idea. And dying in plunder? Not sure. I don't think so. Wow, we're drawing, we're drawing the nuts right now. What does he want from me? I mean, what does an undying and plunder deck look like? I gotta get out of here. We swing. I'm gonna tank some damage here. We open attacks just for the two. I can I can get behind this. I'll try anyone once. Well, I 100 percent want to play Butcher here, right? Yeah, we're definitely going to open attack with two. Purify. <laughs> we have one copy of Purify and both times this card's super key. I want to see Imperial Demolish, uh, Demolicious. <laughs> dude, dude, I love this play. Dude, I love Purify right about now. Plunder effects make me every time. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm... Uh, I've actually forgotten the name of the card now, but it needs to be a slow spell. Precious, no plunder. Pilfered goods needs to become a slow spell. It's a way to tweak it without completely shitting on it. I don't think the card should not do what it does, but I don't think it should be done at burst speed where you can have black, mar black market merchants on the field and just not feel bad. He plays a bunch of dudes. I'm gonna play... I'm gonna play Chronicler of Ruin. Put more stats in the field. Get a thing in hand. Block three units. Take every value block I can under the tree. Not do anything about that one though. I love a taste of the action. Important turn. Important turn. I want my units to be at 1 HP because I want him to feel the need to block into them so I can play Radiant Guardian next turn. Like it obviously makes more sense to do this, right? I lose my units. I want more units with low HP for higher chances of him making a mistake and I get my Radiant Guardian down. This is purified too, so we don't have to worry about that at all. It's just a 2 2. Legion Grenadiers. Dude. Alright, check this out, dude. Check this out, dude. Block me. Block me, dude. I could also attempt to outpace him right about now. We, I'm sitting on double Legion Grenadier in Atrocity. I've been gifted a line I may not have prior, previously thought about. Actually, I'm keen to try this. No. Seems too crazy. Block me. Come here. Yes. Yes. Is that all? <sighs> Hurt 
virtue guides me. Run while you can. I feel like I'm going to regret this. He's obviously never going to swing at me again. Should have gone for the other line. We actually would have won. I didn't see the lines, dude. We had double legion grenade dealer, dude. Too committed on the Radiant Guardian where I had a I could have definitely been the aggressor there. And like we would have dealt X amount of damage. His hand was just full of burn. Could have used the atrocity the following turn to kill him. Yeah, dude, I should have like I was leaning into it so much. I'm a little bit disappointed in myself for that, but um you know, these are the these are things that we have to learn from. I feel like I should have understood that matchup though. No worries. Get him in the next one. Why am I? Gonna get the purify in this matchup. It's good against Eye of the Dragon. It feels like it's about it. Let's purify again. How many copies of purify do we have in this list? One copy, and I feel like I've drawn it every single game. I'm gonna play a 2 minute 1-1 one, one that can't do anything right now, but will fetch me some value as the game progresses. Oh. Don't want to use the Butcher here. This is a matchup where it's kind of all about the value. I think we can put another guy in here. It's not a bad choice actually. It'll help us against the aggressive decks. swing he might block into the domination here we'll see we've got okay tools for dealing with aggressive uh decks so but we just kind of misplayed sure he's gonna block into my one one allow me to probably play something else this turn thorny toad thorny toad is gonna toss cards from our deck It ends up being a land around here. He didn't play two spells, did he? 
kind of a weird line. Womp womp. Or play a cheap blocker. Swings with his dude, I block with my dude. Standard gameplay. Oi! We're fine. He passes his turn. And then. Wait, are we. I'm gonna play a, a dude that kills my ally to summon more of it. He's gonna re. Yeah, let's do it for it. Oh, what the fuck? You're not always gonna hit that tremendous value. Just ain't it, Chief? Like this could have been like a Radiant Guardian, you know? But that's fine. I can deal with it. This is a, this is a strategy of the deck, and sometimes I'm not going to have the best of days. At this point... Am I supposed to go a bit more aggressive? And I think so. Can use a single combat to fix up the uh, bad blocks he might take against me. I think ordering matters. Come on. I, uh, oh, that's a harvest right there. Expensive turn. We have some top end cards. Like Tiana. I think I'd be playing too passive there if I chose not to do anything. And I figured that using a Vile Feast to clear that ends up the same. At least this way, like if I use my single combat, I can clear the Vi. I feel like if, I, if I'm not if I'm not attacking, I'm not doing anything, and we have like no more cards left to be productive. I'm supposed to sit back and wait till I find more combos. What I need is a Chronicle of Ruin. I can get there by just sending these Undyings into his face every turn, but that ain't happening right now. I have a glimpse beyond. That's actually kind of important here. For three mana, he can... He can be a bit annoying here, that's for sure. I'm gonna... Wild Feast. It's Claws of the Dragon. Could have Health Potion. But if he uses Health Potion, I should be able to Glimpse Beyond. He will use Health Potion to protect it, but don't take a shit block with it. I can fizzle that spell. I guess at this point, do I glimpse the Butcher or do I glimpse the Undying to buff it up more? If I fizzle the spell, it always seems worth it to me. That way you can't um, summon another Dragling. Good 
These are good cards for us. Radiant Guardians are pretty strong. We're going to take a little bit of damage here. That's all good. So next turn, I think we're going to go like Butcher into Radiant Guardian. We'll go from there. Uh, swing first. Develop Lee Sin. He has two spells to play alongside it. It's not fully buffed up yet though. We can go a bit aggressive here. I want to go aggressive with the Radiant Guardians. He might like use his mana at the moment to play something else. We'll see. Plays a Vi. Damn it, man. Open attack looked a lot better now, didn't it? Demo beam. I'm going to play my card that lets me draw cards. No worries, soft man. Enjoy your dinner. So we're going to pass now. We have a single combat, which could allow us to maybe do something. Oh, but vengeance looks extra spicy. I don't think that will stop us from you can deny it. I go for the vengeance here, I'm pretty sure. Follow up with the single combat. If he has a play. No matter what, I is going to level and I have a crack at using the vengeance to stop that from happening. I think that's pretty important. Now he's considering if he wants to use deny or not. Or will of Ionia. That also work. Come on, buddy. Watch your move. I did an AFK because I wanted a competitive game here, dude. Like if he AFK because he's triggered because he didn't have the answers to protect his Vi, be happy with that. But outside of that, feels bad. Like it's not impossible for him not to have deny either. Found Tiana as well. Come on, react to me. React to me, dude. Make a play. I'm actually doing this for content. I don't need... <laughs> I don't need the LP. I don't care for the rank right now. I do care for the rank. It's not true. But um, this is disappointing. At least surrender. Or you like wander off somewhere. I shouldn't be so hateful. Something... You know, something could have come up. But um... Damn. Guess I'll rally. We have prevailed. I guess it's like a, a point where it's automatic surrender if you miss X amount of turns. Disappointing. We're gonna play one more. So we get those three games there, but I don't think I can count that one now.
Scouts mid range. This list probably looks reasonably the same. Cards like single combat suddenly feel a lot more stronger in this matchup. Is it a keep off the mulligan though? Probably not. I think I need to be looking for other cards prior to that. You kind of hope to draw into this single combat. So cards like Chronicle of Ruin are great. I don't know how many turns of damage I can afford to take. I think this matchup becomes a lot easier if he misses the one drop and it's not always uncommon for them to miss it. It's a bit of a 50-50 roughly if they have six one cost units. That they will have, or if they have, they usually have like three one cost units. Fleetwood Tracker, they sometimes run um, Cythria instead. And that becomes a 50% chance of having it. In the opening mulligan, if there's full mulligan, that's plus one draw. What's happening, dude? Did everyone just disconnect except for me? I'm here, I'm playing some cards. Literally, a 50% chance. Ever win the coin flip. Curves are okay, but we're tanking damage here. At least we weren't on the, um, we're on attacking odds. Saves us two points of damage. Like I'm feeling like it's Curse Keeper, Undying, Crocolith, or Chronicle of Ruin. I feel as if um, Crocolith is going to be slightly better because we can actually interact and block. And I need blockers. There's no way you challenge this Curse Keeper, buddy. It's expected. How much damage can I afford to take here? To be honest, I think finding this Vile Feast is a little bit better than playing Undying. I can get a lot of value from Undying, but this Vile Feast plus Curse Keeper has saved me a lot of damage and a hand is pretty valuable. So I think we can get away with it. We're gonna have a super retarded turn next turn. Unless he chooses to block my dudes. Does he block my dudes? Does he block my dudes? I'm not sure. What are the chances that he decides to actually block my units? Unlikely. It's a bit of a coin flip there. Okay, he wants to play a dude. Play a dude. All right, this is big. A little bit of a swing there, dude. A little bit of a swing there, dude. I'm always blocking you here. Do I use my biggest unit to block his units? This is kind of a strange one. I think I'll be using my biggest units to block his units for now. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I like 5 HP on a unit more than I like 2 HP on a unit. An open attack first of all. Came a long way for a bullet. I'll stop you. We got a song with a spider as well, no just to get him off the field. Not My board's getting a bit full. Yeah, okay, not in a bad spot at all. We had a pretty nuts opener. That one copy of Crocolith coming in super duper clutch. I value this 7-2 body now? 
when I can summon a six cost unit. I'll go for it here. That is a big, big unit, dude. I think that's enough value for me. Holy shit, this is going to be quite intense for him to deal with. We're still undying, yes. I think our last opponent may have disconnected, which caused, you know, for a pretty average game. I'm going to play a unit that can't block here. Fill my board up, which is probably irrelevant, but the rest of my cards are combo cards. So... It is what it is. Here we go. Time to get rowdy. He's going to swing with his dudes. I'm going to chip down my board a little bit. Do I value the HP on this at all? Uh, I, need to, I need to empty my board down. Just a tiny bit. Now I'll play a Butcher here, just for a cheap blocker. Like I don't mind if he uses the tracker to hit into it at all. Just clearing up the board here. Sure. I think I'll tank 4 here. Because this is not a bad target for my next Ethereal Reminitor. for now. Maybe I need the 4-3 body though. Do I value a 7 cost unit? Could be so much uh, I think I value more bodies that can actually interact with the board. It'd be pretty greedy for me to use the Ethereal Minute there. We're still just full swinging, right? We're swinging with... That barrier is a little bit annoying. I need to buff this. He's obviously going to block with the barrier. I need to buff this so it actually does something. Vulnerable? Sure thing, buddy. Follow my lead. Ten redeemed hydrate. Go. Want to become famous? Buy followers, primes, and viewers. Want to become famous? <laughs> oh, dude. Want to become famous? Thanks for redeeming the hydrate, dude. Hello. I guess he's kind of all in here, isn't he? How just happened? Pass for now. Their pride will cost them. Don't stand in my way. It's completely obliterating my board. I can afford to go down a little bit of HP here. Can I? Four. I think I can. Yeah, that's true, Analyzer Gaming. That's true. I need to know something. I need to know, like, what happens if I. Does this have its stats still? Or it's become reset. 
Here comes reset. This is a little bit curious about something there. Okay, we're just gonna swing with our big please. So we just go wide. Game's looking pretty promising. You could possibly draw into a um, Sithria. That might be a little bit of a bummer. But I think we'll be able to get around it. It's over. Ladies and gentlemen. Got him. I think there was one play where like Chronicle of the Fire 5, so we're talking about the um, free ord unit, right? Takes the vulnerable off. Which would have um, stopped him from getting a really good trade into it. And we would have still maintained a 5-5. Five five. It's probably optimal. Like that unit, if it gets revived as well, I'm pretty sure we get more buffs in our deck. Yeah, correct. Analyze it. Definitely correct. Which probably would have been worth it. I mean, in the end, I used Chronicle on um, my 4-2 though, which was my battering ram, which I was able to revive into a another 12 HP unit. Which I didn't mind either. You know, either or. I think both lines are okay. But he just got a really good trade into my Hearthguard. That's the name of the card. Hearthguard. But yeah, I was still pretty happy 